British researcher Alexander Fleming, a laboratory scientist searching for weapons against bacteria, is just beginning his career when the outbreak of war allows him to observe firsthand severely infected wounds. When the First World War broke out, Alexander Fleming, like many other physicians, found himself over in Northern Europe treating battlefield casualties. The fields in Northern Europe, in Belgium, Flanders, these were richly fertilized fields, and richly fertilized fields are rich in microorganisms, which, when they come in contact with exposed wounds, cause deadly infections. It's said that probably more soldiers died from infection than died from direct bullet or shell injury. After the war, he returns to England and for the next 10 years, searches diligently for compounds that can kill bacteria. Fleming went off at the end of July every year for summer holidays in the north of Scotland, and July 1928 was no exception. He tidied up his laboratory before leaving, of course, and in doing so, he took all the plates that he'd been growing bacteria on, and he stacked them in a bath of antiseptic. But there was enough antiseptic in that bath to cover all the plates. Fortunately, one or two remained uncovered. What happens next is the stuff of legend, recreated in a film by Fleming himself. Here at St. Mary's Hospital Medical School in Paddington, through this very window 25 years ago, a speck of mold blew in and settled onto Professor Fleming's culture plate. Many people will tell you that the mold came in from the street through the window of Fleming's laboratory. Fleming couldn't possibly have opened his window because he had a whole bench full of laboratory glassware and petri dishes in front of him, and he couldn't have stretched over to open the window. No truth in that story. The mold almost certainly came from the laboratory below his, where a researcher was working with fungi. And that mold landed on the dish at the top of the stack starts to grow. Weeks later, Fleming discovers what luck and a little sloppiness can produce. Professor Fleming was examining colonies of bacteria when he came upon one which had gone mouldy. Round the mould, the jelly was clear as if the mold were preventing the bacteria from growing. Now, when Fleming picked up this plate and looked at it, his first reaction probably was to say, mm, it's contaminated and throw it away. But he thought twice, and he realized he had the sagacity to understand what was happening. Fleming immediately sets out to confirm his suspicion that a substance in the mold has killed the bacteria. He calls his new discovery penicillin, after the mold penicillium. He observes that the mold can destroy the cell walls of the most virulent strains of bacteria. And when he mixes penicillin with his own blood, he's delighted to see that while it's lethal to bacteria, it's quite harmless to human blood cells. He manages to recover just enough to test on the kind of surface wound infections he saw during the war. The penicillin mold that he'd grown in the broth in the laboratory didn't produce enough penicillin to cure infections by applying it topically. It was fine to kill off bacteria growing on a plate of agar. You didn't need much penicillin to do that. But to work in an open wound, needed a fairly high concentration of penicillin. Fleming was never able to achieve that. So when he found that his penicillin wasn't working, he lost interest in it. He carefully preserves the fickle mold and moves on to other research. In 1929, Alexander Fleming doesn't realize what he's found. 